So the first thing I do when I'm creating a new animation is I'll do what's called thumbnailing. So we'll rename this first layer to just be called thumbs. And the reason they call it thumbnails is you zoom out to about the size of a thumbnail. So just a really small drawing. And the reason you do that is so you don't have to worry about details or anything. So I'm going to create a new color swatch by clicking this plus down here on my color palettes. And I'll change this to like a dark gray color. And I'll call this my sketch. And then I'll draw with usually a pretty big brush just so it forces me to not worry about details or anything like that. So for this example, I'm just going to do a quick animation take. Pretty basic. So we have our two frames, but let's say we wanted to add a frame in between these two. So there's a couple different ways I could do that. I could click and then drag the second frame and that'll give me an extra frame of this first drawing here. And then I can select this middle one and press delete or backspace, whatever you have the hotkey set up to. And then I can add in my in-between drawing or my breakdown. And there we have our breakdown drawing. Another way to change timing in Toon Boom is to use shift equals to add frames or plus on your numpad. That'll make our exposure for that drawing last longer. So this middle drawing is now lasting for that length of time. If I wanted to shorten it, I could use just the minus button on my keyboard and it'll shorten it. So I could also do that to add in a new in-between in between these two drawings by pressing shift equals, going to the drawing I want to add, pressing backspace. You could also use this button up here, create empty drawing. So these two buttons are pretty important. Create empty drawing will create a blank drawing so I can draw my in-between right here. Or I can use what's called duplicate drawing or alt shift D is usually the hotkey I'll use. So what that does is it'll create the same drawing, but when I edit this drawing, it doesn't affect the one before it. So if I zoom in into my timeline, these two are the same drawings, but because I use the duplicate drawing, it allows me to edit this drawing. So something to pay attention to in Toon Boom is copying and pasting drawings. And the reason they have this duplicate drawing tool. So if I were to copy this frame and paste it say over here, it looks like it's a new drawing, right? And I can just edit it and do whatever I wanted to. But because I copied and pasted it, these are actually the same drawing. So if I go back to this drawing, you'll see that red X has appeared, which is not what we want. We wanted to be able to edit frame 10 and not affect frame two. So let's undo that. Let's go to frame 10, which we copied and pasted. And then we'll press this duplicate drawing tool or use our hotkey of Alt Shift D. And now, when I edit it and I go back to frame two, you'll see it doesn't edit this one as well. So if you wanna use the same artwork, but don't wanna affect other drawings, you wanna use the duplicate drawing. And the reason it has that option is because if I were to create a cycle, and let's say I have that cycle repeating a hundred different times, and I wanted to edit just one frame of that cycle, because I copied and pasted it, if I edit that one frame, it'll propagate to the rest of the cycle, which is super useful. I love that feature. So just something to keep in mind. Copying and pasting will keep it connected as if it were the same drawing. The same thing goes with layers, actually. So there's two options when you want to duplicate a layer. There's duplicate layers or there's clone layers. So clone you can think of as that copy and paste we did earlier. If we clone our layer, Let's just do drawings only. Depends if you want to keep the drawing and timing, but we'll just do drawings only because we don't have any animation on it. So it created this thumbs underscore one layer. And if I turn off my original thumbs with this eyeball tool, and then I were to edit my thumbs underscore one drawing, hide that, and then show the original, you'll see it's affected the same drawing. So perhaps that's not what you want. So let's undo that. So instead of clone, let's use duplicate. So if I do that, hide my original thumbs layer, and then edit thumbs underscore one, you'll see it hasn't affected the original layer, which may be what you want. Depends on what you're going for. So just another thing to keep in mind, how copying and pasting works and also how duplicate versus clone works. So let's turn this drawing into our overshoot. So I wanna see this drawing up ahead so I know how to reference it. So the way we do that is with what's called onion skinning. And onion skinning allows you to see the previous and the forward drawings. It's super important to animation. So to turn on onion skinning, it's this tool over here. Looks like an eyeball on top of a stack of red pancakes. If I turn that on, you'll see down in my timeline, these two brackets appear on my playhead. And this shows how far your onion skin goes. 
and you can drag it as far as you want or as close as you want. For this example, we're only gonna be looking at the drawing before it and the drawing after it. So we just have it on one frame either way. So to turn on onion skin, I can either turn it on using this button here, but the best way to use onion skin is to go down here and click the onion skin in your timeline. So that way you can have onion skin on multiple layers and you can select different ones on and off. So if I had multiple layers like so, I could turn onion skin on this one and this one, or I could turn it off here and on here. This is the easiest way to turn on and off onion skin is using your timeline over here. If I were to turn the onion skin on and off using this tool, it only works on the layer I have selected. So with my onion skin, I have it set up so previous drawings are purple and next drawings are in green. I'll show you how to set up preferences for your onion skin. We just go under Edit, Preferences, under our Drawing tab, which is right here. And your onion skin preferences are gonna be over here under Onion Skin Render Style. So you can do Enable Shade, which means it'll color your previous and next drawings. You could do normal, so it keeps the same colors as you have on the original drawing. Or you can do outline only, which will just be an outline. So I switch between these depending on what I'm doing, but usually I'll have this enable shade option turned on. And then to edit the colors, that's under our general tab. And you'll see down here, there's this button called edit colors. And to change the onion skin, we want to go under our drawing tab. So you can see my onion skin previous is purple, and onion skin next is this dark green color. So to save our changes, we'll just press OK and press OK again. So now we have our animation. These are our thumbnails. So you can see they're super rough. There's not a lot of detail to them, but this helps get ideas down. And it also helps you not care about your drawings as much. So if you needed to delete a whole scene, uh, it's not that big of a deal because you didn't spend that much time on it. So it's a good way to plan out ideas. But if I were to play this animation by clicking the play button, it's over in like a millisecond, so we need to adjust our timing. So again, to do that, we want to use Shift equals or our minus button to edit our timing. And that'll work on whatever layer we have selected. So if you had multiple layers and you wanted to adjust the timing on the whole animation, you could press Control A to select all your layers and then start using Shift equals or minus to move your timing around. And then just drag our playhead where we want to edit our changes again. So it's a pretty short example, but here's our animation all retimed out. So now I actually want to go in and start animating this. So remember before with clone and duplicate, we want to make sure to select duplicate because we want to edit our changes on our new layer. So I'll click and drag this and move this to the top above my thumbs layer, and I'll double click to rename it. And we'll call this rough animation. So now I have a new layer with all the same timing and drawings, but because I already have my thumbnail drawings underneath it, I don't want my thumbnails inside these layers. So there's a couple different ways you could do that. You could go through each one, selecting them and then deleting them on each frame. But there's actually a faster way to get rid of our drawings. And that's under our paint bucket tools. So these paint bucket tools are super useful. I could use paint unpainted to fill in the whole thing with like a white fill. I could repaint these drawings to have them be a different color, or I can use unpaint to remove our drawing. So if I were to use my unpaint tool and select around my drawing, it deletes it or takes away the painting. But you'll see I still have to do it on the other drawing. So what do we do? We use this tool over here, apply to multiple drawings. And what that does is if I have that turned on, whatever tool I'm using, it's gonna affect my entire timeline. So if I have that selected and I use my unpaint tool and highlight around my whole drawing, it unpaints all of my frames. So now I can turn on my thumbnail drawing and use it as a reference. But it's pretty dark, right? Like it makes it kind of hard to draw over. So what I can use is this light table button over here. If I turn that on, whatever layer I'm drawing on top of will become 100% opaque and the other layers will become transparent. You can also use this tool, current drawing on top, so that if I had a drawing in front of my thumbnail drawing and I click current drawing on top and go to my thumbnail, it'll ignore that it's underneath this drawing and put it on top so I can edit it. So that can be pretty useful. So yeah, when I'm doing this stage of rough animation, I'll usually leave my light table on and just use my thumbnails as reference. And for my red tool, usually I'll bring down the transparency just to make it more of a sketch marker sort of look to it. And then I'll go through and do my rough animation.